The 2021 Modu Proprio Traditionis Custodis has been an unparalleled disaster for the Catholic Church. Its abrogation of Sumorum Pontificum curtailed the hitherto fruitful expansion of the traditional Latin Mass and ushered in the current period of persecution, collapsing the liturgical peace of Benedict XVI in favor of the liturgical war of Pope Francis. The ongoing worldwide cancellation of diocesan Latin masses is a tragedy which cries to heaven for redress. But perhaps the most insulting aspect of Traditionis Custodis is its call for traditional Catholics to be re-educated in order to appreciate the riches of the new mass. The implication is insulting. The directive to educate traditional Catholics about the new Mass implies that our affinity for the old Mass is attributable, ultimately, to sheer ignorance. The reason you love the traditional Mass is because you are empty-headed. You poor traditionalist rubes have not yet been enlightened by the vision that Roche, Grillo, and their compatriots are peddling. But never fear, your bishops will send you to a Bergoglian re-education program to set you straight. You will reap the fruits of the new springtime until you love it, until you see the smile hidden behind Big Brother's mustache. The proposition reeks to high heaven of the very clericalism Francis claims to deplore, telling traditional Catholics that our worship is not only wrong, but grounded in ignorance. How different from the generous approach of Pope Benedict XVI, Benedict believed Traditional Catholics love the Old Mass because we had found something of positive value. Francis believes we love it because we lack something. Benedict's observations were astute. Most traditional Catholics love the traditional Mass precisely because they have been educated. They have been educated about the Church's history, liturgy, and spirituality. They have immersed themselves in her tradition and found therein solace and deep spiritual nourishment. A great many, myself included, began in the Novus Ordo. Our interest in tradition awakened through attempts to bring more reverence to the Reformed liturgy. But gradually, as we learned more about the Church's liturgical heritage, we realized that what we were truly looking for was found most perfectly in the traditional Latin Mass. If anything, it is education that leads you to the traditional Mass, not away from it. I, for example, was a pretty normie Catholic in my early days. I was so oblivious about these things, I didn't even realize that the Novus Ordo wasn't the mass of tradition. Although I admit I was occasionally confused why there was no Latin when everything I read said the mass had historically been in Latin. It was not until I read the history of the Second Vatican Council that I started to understand what had happened. And once the scope of the liturgical revolution became known to me, I was livid. I felt as though I had been robbed of my inheritance by interlopers who, in their hubris, thought they knew what was best for me better than my forefathers, who intended to pass on that inheritance intact. That the patrimony passed on through so many centuries, beloved by so many saints, sanctified by the blood of so many martyrs, should be robbed from me a mere 11 years before I was born. Well, that tends to rub a fellow the wrong way. And what would a Novus Ordo re-education tell us that we haven't already heard anyway? Would it tell us about the riches of the new springtime? Would it tell us about more scripture readings, about the universal call to holiness, the new Pentecost, maybe active participation, or if we get lucky, synodality. Most of us have heard every argument for the new Mass, but the problem is that these arguments break like waves against the rock of experience. Does anyone believe any authority in the mainstream church anymore when they talk about liturgical reverence? Nothing ever changes. Sure, every now and then you may get an idealist pastor with liturgical sensibility who does some good. Maybe he celebrates ad orientum, he brings back the altar rails, he adopts Gregorian chant. But then inevitably, the pastor gets moved, or a new bishop comes in, or there's too many complaints, and then the entire sandcastle collapses and reverts back to the status quo. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me over and over and over again since 1969? Nobody buys it anymore. The promised renewal of the conciliar age 
has proven to be naught but smoke and mirrors, and this is borne out by the hard facts. There's simply nothing to be re-educated about. By the way, funny how the suppression of the Latin Mass and this alone requires re-education with periodic updates to be provided to Rome. I ask you, when John Paul II issued Ecclesia de Eucharistia and said that the Eucharist is too great a gift to tolerate ambiguity and depreciation and called for liturgical irreverence to end, did Rome come calling on every bishop three years later to see how their re-education campaigns were going? When Benedict XVI issued Sacramentum Caritatis and deplored what he called the introduction of artificial discontinuities and abuses into the liturgy, did Benedict call for a universal re-education of progressives worldwide with the CDF to check in on the progress after the fact? Of course not. It's only when tradition is on the table that the kid gloves come off. The church has a lot of weight, but... It seems that it's only ever thrown in one direction.